Okay, guys, we're going to go through the Moving Coal loudspeaker. This is the application for the forces uh, in magnetic fields. Okay, so so far, <clears throat> gone through the notes, uh, you'd be aware that um, wires placed in magnetic fields will experience a force if they are, if some component of them is at right angles to the direction of the field, the external field. So an application of this is the moving cold bell speaker. So this is uh, this device is, uh, you know it. It's uh, it's your um, <clears throat> it's your headphones. There's also the principle behind the microphone. Um, th th this basic design has been around for um, well, well over a century, and the inventor actually remarked so long ago that it's such an easy design. He was surprised that no one invented it before he did, and that's uh, we're still going back a fair way. It's actually a very simple device. Okay, so if you kind of look, you can see on the left hand side, we've got a, a cross sectional view of an actual um, um, speaker that you experience, like um, it could be something in the car or something in your home theater. Um, but the, the idea of like, the earbuds you, you listen to your, um, uh, your mobile phone with um, or whatever you use, um, it's the same principle, same principle exactly. So you have a solenoid of wire which will carry a charge, or sorry, will carry a current wrapped around a magnet um, and the solenoid is a, is free to move um, in this um, orientation up and down in the way I've got here left and right uh, that is attached to a cone which has some freedom to move and that can move up and down but not left and right the spider stops it from moving um, uh, uh, horizontally as shown here uh, that the spider is not actually something that's in the course but um, the, the key ones you have to remember is the coil which is the solenoid your permanent magnet and the cone, which is actually what's going to be interacting with the air particles. All right, so let's just go into um, our field. So we know by the right hand palm rule that um, a force is performed. Well, um, if you have a, um, a wire that is at right angles to, or some component of which, which is right angles to um, a magnetic field, you experience a force, the direction of the force is determined by the right hand palm rule. So we're going to be practicing that in a moment. Okay, so in this cross-sectional view, you can see the actual magnet itself is um, kind of like you, see, you can consider this circular outside section as north in the inside part here south. And you slip a solenoid attached to a cone inside that. Uh, but for the sake of ease, we're going to use this one on the right hand side just to um, interact with our field. Okay. So I'm going to get my brush up and I'm going to draw in the, the, the magnet is permanent. So I'm going to draw some permanent field lines in a moment. Okay. All right, so field lines are going to go from north to south. I'll try to draw them going down uniformly. I probably should have used the mouse instead. Okay. So in this section, they're going down. All right. Let me get the idea. So that's our magnetic field. Um, and here's north to south going that way. So they, these ones are going up. All right. So now um, the the coal of wire. In terms of our little cross-sectional picture here, we consider. Um, I'll use another color for the current. So let's use uh, blue. Okay. For now, let's imagine that the field lines for the magnet are permanent. But for now, let's imagine that we have a current that at the top of the page, so I made my current, it's going to be blue, direction of I. And that's going to be for here. I will make that go into the page, so it crosses. So current wires are going into the page, so it crosses. So our wires are going into the page. And obviously, if they're going into the page at the top, they'll come out of the page. So we have the dots. Uh, 
The bottom, so dots at the bottom. Okay, now use your right hand palm rule for that. Let's see, see where we go. Point your thumb in the direction of, let's start with the top, thumb in the direction of your current and your thumb is into the page at the top and the field lines are to the uh, going down. So the force is coming out of your palm, which in this case, I'll use another color for the force. There it is. Okay, so let's use purple for the force. All right, the force at the top on the solenoid, that's your force. It's going in. All right, so let's just see if that's confirmed with the bottom section. All right, so try again. Point your thumb out of the page and point your fingers up. You notice on your right hand, your palm is pointing again to the left. So in that section is also, the force is also going to the left. Okay, so in this particular instance, if the current is flowing around that direction, as I've shown you, the force is to the left. Now what happens with the, the cone? Well, the cone's attached to the solenoid. In some freedom, it will retract. So the, the, the cone will go to the left and it will lead a, um, an area of low pressure. Okay, so low pressure uh, in this section. Okay, so now let's reverse that and let's see what happens. So, uh, oops. That's my house. All right, let's redo that. Let's go back to our blue. All right. So we had um, at the top of the page that was um, going into the page. Now we're going to reverse that. The permanent magnet is still the permanent magnet, so you can't help that. So you're not changing the direction of your magnetic field, just the uh, current. So these, these dots are coming out of the page, and we're going to have crosses. All right. Now apply your right-hand palm rule, and what you'll notice in this case the force lost my mouse where have you gone there you are the force in this case will actually be to the right in both cases all right so that the coil will move out and you have a region of high pressure All right, so imagine if you only have the current flowing one way. Well, either it's going to move um, physically as far as it is allowed to to the left or physically as far as it's allowed you to the right. Um, it has some freedom to oscillate, but it is also constrained by, if you look at the picture on the left, constrained by uh, the design. All right, well, that's not, going to really, um, that's, going to, that's not going to really make sound. It's just going to bump one direction and stop. Uh, or, or the other direction. So what we actually need is an alternating current. So if you have an alternating current um, going through the solenoid, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the cone is going to be moving back and forth. Now a couple of things you could do with that. So maybe let's get rid of all of this. So the cone moves left and right. If we're an alternating current, it's going to move left and right. Um, and is going to, as such, as it moves to the right, as we've shown here, it's going to make a region of high pressure. As it moves to the left, it will make a, a region of low pressure. Um, and that is the principle behind making um, a sound wave. Uh, also, in regions of high and low pressure, a, um, a longitudinal wave. So, sometimes represented, you can, you can represent a few ways. You can represent by, um, okay, let's draw something here. There we go. All right, so sometimes you represent that by, okay, like kind of thick lines and then spaced out lines and then thick lines and spaced out lines. So as it's, as it's, it's moving out that way and you've got regions of high pressure, regions of low pressure, oscillating pressure wave, um, and that's your sound. Okay, so the frequency um, of the sound that's coming out is determined by the frequency of the alternating current. So if you have a high alternating current, you have a high pitch sound. 
Okay. Um, if you have a high current, um, it'll be pushed out. It will still oscillate with the frequency. So you still have the same pitch. It will just be more violent in how fast it pushes out. So the connection between frequency of the alternating current is the frequency of the noise coming out, so the, the pitch of the sound. And the uh, magnitude of the current, that is the amplitude. So when you turn up the current in your speaker, uh, when you turn up the volume, you are turning up the current. Uh, you are well. What you're really doing is you're playing with an alternate um, with a uh, resistor. Um, as such, um, as the resistance is low, you get a high current by your ohmic circuit rules. All right. So that is the general principle. It's a very simple principle behind how the moving cold loudspeaker works. But I hope you took something away from that video. All right, guys. I'll catch you later.